Flight Combat's been a bit of a dig through the eShop on handhelds since the Nintendo Switch was made. Ace Combat had two great games on the PlayStation Portable and 3DS even got a good remake of AC2. Since then, handhelds and the series have been distant friends. Rather than that, we have prototype games like Vertical Strike and the mobile franchise that has been gaining popularity, Sky Gamblers. Today, we're talking about their newest entry that released not only for the Switch, but PlayStation as well. Something of a new release and follow-up to the first of the series. Here is my review of Sky Gambler's Air Supremacy 2 for the Nintendo Switch. The plot of this game takes place in a world where armed forces took control. A number of these militaries merged into a super corporation aimed at control of all American continents with its extensive air force. You play as Raptor, a pilot for the opposing military, trying to defend parts of the Americas and stop them from creating their own supremacy over the world. The canon of where this falls in the timeline, if there even is a timeline, is weird. Your supporters are mostly returning characters and portraits from Afterburner, but there really isn't a story between them. Unlike that previous game, they're just there to comment on the mission and nothing else. The plot also doesn't have a real conclusion to it. A villain is introduced about halfway through the game as a bit of a rival or adversary set to go after you, but they disappear from the game after a couple missions and don't return. At first I thought it was going to lead to a final battle with them, but instead you get a bit of a cliffhanger ending in the final mission and they never show back up. When it comes to gameplay, this is a 3D air combat game. I wouldn't call it a full-on flight sim like Ace Combat, but it's much closer to that than previous Sky Gamblers games. Now the first question, is this a new game or a port of a mobile title? Afterburner, that seemed like a new game for the Switch, was actually a bit of a reimagining port of Sky Gambler's Infinite Jets from mobile. I did a good bit of comparing with the other Sky Gambler games over on mobile platforms. While many things are shared between titles, from character portraits to a few of the maps, it does appear to be new. Now like with Afterburner, you've got single player and online multiplayer to go into from the main menu. Single player lets you go through the 14 mission campaign as well as creating custom matches with the AI for free for all versus or free flying if you just want to see the environment. Multiplayer is like custom matches but with others from around the world instead of just you and the AI. You can also go into the customized part of the main menu to change up your planes with different missile loadouts and paint vinyl skins that unlock as you complete missions and gain experience. Now one difference between this and Afterburner is no shop. Buying planes is regulated to the progression system where you unlock them as you play instead of using currency to buy them. Now campaign is the biggest part of this game. Each mission will have you go through various real world locations, shooting down enemy planes, navigating to bases, and fulfilling objectives. Your aircraft and weapons will be preset for each mission, introducing you to different planes and of course, keeping that coveted F-22 Raptor from you until the final mission. Speaking of. The game has 18 different aircraft you can pilot and all under semi-generic names. For example, the F-14 Tomcat is called the AF-14, and the F-22 the AF-22. Different enough to maybe not be completely in copyright territory, and players can still identify them without having to look them up. But it is worth noting that the 18 roster is easily half of what was available in Afterburner. Granted, these are much more realistic depictions, but it is worth noting that Afterburner had access to over 30 planes instead of just 18. Let's now move on to the missions and flying. You get an Ace Combat style briefing before each mission. You get a little voice segment with a map layout of what you have to do, be it defend a position from enemies or attacking an enemy base. Though the voice work is a little weird as it is more robotic and text to speech like than an actual voice actor. Perhaps that was intentional, but it sounds a bit weird. Once you get in the air, the fun begins. As I said above, Air 2 will feel closer to Ace Combat than the previous games. The pacing is a bit slower, the UI for locking onto enemies is closer to that square lock on look of Ace Combat, and it feels much tighter on movement. Though with features, it still feels like Sky Gamblers. You've still got the acrobatic moves for turning and evading set to the D-pad, the formation feature returns as well, giving your allies the ability to follow and fight with you. And you've still got two missile evasion mechanics, shooting flares to ward off heat-seeking missiles and scrambling the radars for you and the enemy for the standard missiles. But let's get back to the different features. 
I find the changes to be both good and bad. It really depends on what kind of air combat game you're looking for. It feels more like Ace Combat, but the slower pacing is very noticeable when jumping between this and Afterburner. Even the acrobatic turnarounds in that game go through much faster. It also gives the game much more of a difficulty curve and a longer feel for each mission when you're constantly circling and following opponents than doing quick moves and decimating them with missiles. But no matter what style you like between this and Afterburner, the controls do feel good. Plus, they got rid of that weird accelerometer confusion from the last game. You know, where the gyro controls were set to the accelerometer setting instead of just saying, hey, this is where the motion controls are. But unfortunately, that means there are no motion controls here. The aim assist is pretty strong, so you don't really need the extra help, but it is worth noting. Once you get through each mission, you are awarded experience with multipliers depending on what difficulty you can play on. This lets you level up and unlock new aircraft, weapons, and cosmetics that can be used in other game modes. Though you can also get this experience from custom matches, so you don't always have to go through the campaign. That also brings us to content and length. While I'm glad we do have more here than Afterburner, we don't have a whole lot. Afterburner's campaign only took me around 2 hours to complete, and this one took me about 3-4 to four hours to complete. That is twice of what the previous game had, but it's a bit of a debate on whether that 3-4 to four hour campaign is worth the $25 price tag. Next up is Presentation. Visually, this game looks great. A ton of detail on everything from the environments to the aircraft. Though it is a bit weird that they only have one cockpit for all planes. There's a ton of detail on pretty much everything else, but the F-22, F-14, and even the A-10 all have the exact same cockpit. But moving on, performance is nice as well. Load times are still pretty lengthy, but the frame rate is nice and steady from start to finish. Even handheld mode didn't see many drops under 30. And with that, we're on to battery life. The original model gets a battery range of 3 hours and 57 up to 4 hours and 39. The Nintendo Switch Lite gets a range of 4 hours and 9 up to 4 hours and 48. The Red Boxer V2 2019 model gets a range of 5 hours and 32 up to 6 hours and 52. And the OLED model gets a range of 5 hours and 49 up to 6 hours and 58. In conclusion, Sky Gamblers returns to the Switch with something trying to be a bit more like Ace Combat than the more arcade style air combat games. Now with the downside, the roster is easily half the size of Afterburner. The story has a bit of a lackluster ending and cliffhanger with no clues on DLC or a sequel. And we still have a very short runtime for the campaign. But if you're looking for air combat that feels tighter and more simulation-like than the previous games of the series, I had fun for the few hours the campaign lasted. Reviews to go rates Sky Gamblers Air Supremacy 2 for the Nintendo Switch a 7.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.